Welcome to my second ever lore play series. As I finished Dark Forces, I had a vote on Twitter to see what I should play next, and Knights of the Old Republic just barely beat out The Force Unleashed. So I hope you guys are ready to play this for the next two years. I'm kidding, but seriously, this game is long. Now all I need to do is name my character. How about Navar Trad? Because I think it would be funny if the Jedi needed to rename this guy and they just completely uncreatively spelled his name backwards. Anyway, it's game time. For this first episode, let's talk about the Hammerhead Corvette, because it's the first ship we see, and now that it's popped up in Star Wars Rebels and Rogue One, it's the perfect time to talk about it. I'll start by going over what we know in canon, and then I'll expand upon the information with Legends material as I run through the inside of one with my buddy Trask, who literally will not shut up. Even by canon standards, the Hammerhead style design has been around for centuries. They were known to be powerful with strong bodies, which is displayed pretty effectively in Rogue One. Not only could they withstand ramming a Star Destroyer, but their engines were powerful enough to move a disabled one. Unfortunately, that's about all we currently know, so let's get into Legends, which is more fitting anyway considering this is a Legends game. But wait, it's a Sith! It's a Dark Jedi! No Trask, it's a Sith, not a Dark Jedi. There's a difference, you noob. Oh well, they're both dead anyway. Just gonna loot this body and take your lightsaber? Nope, I can't. Why not? I don't know why not. Whatever, I'll just take your money and be on my way. Where was I? Oh yeah, the Legends version of the Hammerhead. Instead of Corvettes, the ships in this game are called Hammerhead Class Cruisers. Now there's no hard and fast rule on the specific differences between a cruiser and a Corvette, but in general, it seems that cruisers were the larger class, meaning the Legends version is larger than the canon. And I think that looks to be true here. They were armed with six turbo laser cannons, quad laser cannons, and point defense batteries. Compare that to the Corvette's three dual laser cannons. Even the bridge seems much more spacious here than it did in Rogue One. Of course, like I mentioned before, the Corvette version we see in Rebels and Rogue One is supposed to be based on a very old design, and just in case you've never played Knights of the Old Republic before, this game takes place 4,000 years before the events of the films. Even in Legends, Hammerhead-style ships appeared throughout the timeline, including the new Sith Wars, which happened about 3,000 years after the events of this game. They were also around before this game, during the Great Sith War, and there was an even larger Praetorian-class frigate that shared the Hammerhead design as well. This ship specifically, where the game starts, is called the Indar Spire. It was part of the Galactic Republic fleet assigned to stop the invading fleets of Darth Revan and Darth Malak during the Jedi Civil War. It was under the command of Bastila Shan until it was boarded by Darth Vanden over the planet Terris. And that's who we've been fighting against this whole time. Sith. Not Dark Jedi, Trask. Although, I feel like I should point out why Trask called them Dark Jedi. These guys were part of the Sith Empire, but they weren't Sith Lords. So, they were probably referred to as Dark Jedi just to avoid confusion. Also, the armored guys are still technically Sith, but they're Sith troops, part of the Sith army. They don't have Force abilities, but they still fight for the Sith. This was back before the time of the Rule of Two, when the Sith had a huge and conspicuous presence in the galaxy. Our goal on this ship is pretty much just to reach an escape pod and get off before it explodes. And now we've done that. So off we go, headed for Terrace. Despite the ship seemingly vaporizing, the Indar Spire will crash onto the planet behind us and remain there throughout the Cold War. And I think that sounds like a decent stopping point, and we can talk about the planet Terrace next Friday. We'll do its Legends history and talk about its return to canon. But until then, please like this video, subscribe to the channel to see new Star Wars videos every single day, follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, and consider checking out my Patreon page. As always, thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you.